What's going on YouTube? The Apophis here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to bring you some more Battlefield 3. This is going to be some Rush gameplay though. You guys have been asking for some other game types and things like that. So this is a game of Rush that I got sometime a week or two ago playing alongside Newbie of Duty and Stang7043. We had a absolute blast. Uh, kudos to Newbie for putting together this game. He's the one that, you know, spends his time tweeting out when he's going to get on and he tries to organize a team. And he's been doing a fantastic job at it, and it's it. The result has been a lot of really, really fun gameplay. So, I really chose this game because of the small. I thought it would bring a cool story. Those of you that are new around here may or may not know, but I did some time in the United States Marine Corps. And those of you that may have known that might not know exactly what my job was. I just so happened to be a small gunner. True story. Um, if you look at my YouTube name, the Apophis0351, if you go do yourself a Google search for United States Marine Corps Military Occupational Specialty 0351, you'll find out exactly what my job was. And to be honest with you, I was trained on the small as the primary weapon. One thing Battlefield does amazing with the small is the sound. That is exactly like the small sounds when you fire it, minus a deafening boom um, when that rocket goes off it it shakes everything around you and it just shatters your ears it's so loud but it's such a rush um, a lot of people think that the small like would kick right a lot of people think that rocket launchers are like oh you shoot them and they kick that's so not true um, there's zero kick at all in a rocket launcher and the reason for that is all of the gases from the explosion of the rocket just get pushed out the back it doesn't get pushed against anything it gets pushed right out the back um, the back blast just goes that way and then the rocket comes out you do feel a transfer of weight though because it's specifically with the small now this is different with the RPG but specifically with the small the rockets in the back so it's behind you so you feel it kind of go through the tube and it comes out front heavy so you have to really have that thing into your shoulder tight so that you don't dip it because the rockets are actually are relatively close to 20 pounds. This shot was a blast. I was so happy when I hit that shot. Me and Stang were coming up this hill. We heard that helicopter and I was like, I'm going to try to get this bitch. And that, oh, I got so lucky that I caught him in the tail. Got those two kills. It was a nice shot. It really made this game for me. And that was one of the most excited things about this gameplay uh, while it was going on. But you feel a transfer of weight. Back to the story. You feel a transfer of weight. With the small, with the RPG, it's a little different. Um, the transfer of weight goes behind you versus in front of you. Because when you fire off the grenade from the front, it there's no more weight up front. So it tilts back a little bit. A lot of people miss high with an RPG in reality for that reason. Um, because you're, you know, flicking it up as it goes. One of the things that video games bug me about, especially military shooters, is inaccurate stuff. I understand that they're video games. I understand that they're meant to be played to have fun. But as somebody who's, you know, lived that type of lifestyle, I like things to be accurate. And it's not just video games. It's movies, too. I remember watching uh, this movie, Home of the Brave. Okay? They, uh, it's about um, soldiers that suffer from PTSD or whatever. But it was showing clips of them while they were deployed. And they took out an AT-4 rocket launcher. And they put it on their shoulder backwards and fired it four words impossible there's a big ass arrow on an AT4 that says point this way and they couldn't get that right so it's like things like that irritate me or like you'll see ribbons on a uniform and let's say there will be a ribbon on an army uniform that is a, a Marine Corps only ribbon like that'll frustrate me and other things will frustrate me oh this is another reason why I chose this gameplay not only was I taking out vehicles? Not only was I slaying people, but I plant like three or four incomes. The Apophis was on his fucking game during this this gameplay, so enjoy it. Seriously, if you're not watching it, maybe consider it. It's real, it's a whole lot of fun to enjoy. Um, they seem to get things wrong, and it's like they have military advisors. I don't understand how you get things wrong, but the biggest thing is with video games and weapons. It drives me nuts, and specifically the small, because the small was my baby. In case you're curious, I fired 22 rockets, and I hit 20 of them. Um, a lot of, all, every single one of those, don't get shit twisted, every single one of those was in training. 
by the time I ended up in Iraq and things like that, the smog was pretty much unusable. Not they, there was more politics than war at that point, so they limited our use on it and said we couldn't really use it. We took it out a couple times just in case, but luckily we never had to use the damn thing. So, that being said, there were some other people in different areas of the deployment that, that we were on um, in a different company in our battalion that they fired a few uh, small rockets. We were all kind of jealous of them because they got to fire it. And we didn't, but at the same time, we came home safe. Uh, they did too, but we came home safe, and that's really what mattered. Anyway, let's try to jump back on this thing. Is When games get weapons wrong, it drives me nuts. It absolutely drives me nuts, especially the SMA. If you play Battlefield, the SMA is as accurate as it can be minus the deafening boom, as I said. If you play Call of Duty, the SMA's a fucking joke. First and foremost, it does not lock on to anything. And that pisses me off that they they gave it a lock on feature. Because as a smog gunner, you spend a lot of time working on becoming an accurate shot with the smog because it it's kind of like lobbing a football in a way. Like the rocket burns all of its propellant at the beginning. So it's not a missile. A missile burns its propellant during flight. So when you fire this rocket, if you have like a 500 meter shot, which is a, a stretch, you need to lob it. And it's, you know, small gunners take a lot of time and they spend a lot of pride on developing their shots. So when the game puts a small in it, like Call of Duty does, and they give it a lock on feature, I don't know, it, it rakes me the wrong way. And it's so silly, right? Because it's just a video game, but it definitely gets to me. And as I said, I hate it when movies do it too. One thing I wish they included in the small was the spotting rifle. So there's actually a 9mm rifle that is connected to the side of the small. And it, it shoots a modified round. It's, a, it's like a, the size of an AK round, the cartridge is. But the actual round itself, the, the lead part, the copper part up front, um, is 9mm. So it's, it's a goofy looking thing but it's a tracer and the purpose is you get one chance with a rocket so what you do is you get down there and you fire the spotting rifle there it is right there you see on the right side of the small that that black line right there and with that little handle that's the spotting rifle i wish they would include use of that thing in the game because they see lobbing it and uh totally not working um what it is is you shoot these modified 9mm 7.62 rounds. I know it sounds ridiculous, but Google the small and you'll see what I'm talking about. They're, they're a funny, funny round. And that, that tracer round follows the exact same trajectory that the rocket is. So you gotta lob these tracer rounds too. And people don't understand, the small is a risky piece of equipment because you're shooting off these tracer rounds. That's giving away where you are. Typically, the SMA is designed to shoot tanks, right? That's its whole purpose, really, is to shoot tanks. It's an anti-tank weapon. When you fire that bitch, you're giving off a massive heat signature from the back blast, and the tank is going to pick that up on its infrared. So everything you do as a SMA gunner that's pertinent to your job gives away your position, and it's, it's actually a pretty dangerous and sketchy job. So, we don't, man, if you're firing a small out of tank, those shit has hit the fan and you're probably dead anyway, so you might as well try to get a shot off. But I wish they would incorporate that spotting rifle some way, somehow, especially in, like, Battlefield. It would not be cooler. There wouldn't be a cooler clip in the world to me than taking out a sniper with a small spotting rifle. There's a huge joke amongst everybody that was uh, an O351. And that was, I'm going to get somebody with the spotting rifle of the small. And we always joked about it. I don't think anybody was ever serious with it because it takes forever to set everything up. And that spotting rifle pretty much jams after every round. It's a piece of shit. But it was always a big joke. And I think it would be funny to actually live through that joke in a video game like Battlefield 3. So I don't know, man. That was a little bit about m me and, and a little more of who I am into my channel with some gameplay that correlates. So, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As I said, if you're more curious about what I did, hey, go look up 0351, MOS 0351 on Google, and you'll find out. And, um, it's modified a little bit. I did a little bit more explosives work than they're gonna tell you 
in the MOS description. I've blown up a lot of C4. Here I am reckless because I want that MCOM and it cost me. We get the win either way. Um, I played with a little more C4 than what you're going to read in that description. But that is a story for another day. Depending on what you guys all say in the comments below. Speaking of comments, let's check out the two cool comments from the last video I posted. I chose these two because... It showed me that not only did they listen to the commentary, but they also watched the commentary, which is really cool because I was way proud of those two sniper shots that I hit in the beginning. So these two comments really kind of set it off for me. So I hope you enjoy. If you want a chance to be in the cool comments, just leave a comment on this video and we'll see you around here next time.